What is up, YouTube? We are back here. We are doing another video, and today we are going over the mesh tracking in DaVinci Resolve. That is right. I said mesh tracking. Just like in Mocha Pro, you can do it in DaVinci. You can do this in the free version. So let's not waste any more time, and let's just get at it. So I imported my clip of this guy, as you guys saw in the beginning clip, of him just typing on the computer. I don't know if you noticed, but I added my logo on his shirt right about here. However, you can add it anywhere you want. You could add it to his arm, and this mesh tracker works for everything. So let's just highlight your clip once you have it imported. Right click, and let's go new Fusion Clip, and let's go into the Fusion tab. And we are here in the Fusion tab. I'm going to disable that for now. Let's slide that over, and let's give ourselves just a little bit more room. I already have this arranged to grid, so it's a little bit cleaner. Right, and if you don't know how to do that, you should be able to just right click on the grid here and go to Arrange Tools. I have to grid. All right, cool. So, first thing you want to do is highlight Media One in, hit Shift Spacebar, and we want to type in, as you can already see, Grid Warp, and we want to add that in. And that is going to bring up all of these points. We do not want it to be on region, we want it to be on selected, and we want to increase the amount of points on this image. I like to go all the way up to 30, especially when it's something like this. So 30 on the X grid, 30 on the Y grid. And look at all these grid points, that is amazing. So we want to hold control, and we want to zoom in, command on Mac, use the scroller wheel, go inside, zoom in. And all you want to do is select a selection of these grid points. We'll put this on his sleeve for this time. So I'm going to grab those right there. I got these. What is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Twelve points here. So once you get that done, you want to come up here where this little drop down is next to these little spline tools. We want to drop down there, hit publish to tracker. And what that's going to do is bring a tracker into your grid here. We want to disconnect media one from the grid warp. We will connect that later. Now what we want to do is arrange just a little bit neater and we're going to select tracker and we're going to hit the number one on your keyboard or you can drag it up and that's going to bring all of our tracking points in to this uh, viewer one. So I scroll in again that is commander control in the scroller wheel and then I uh, we want to go back to your first frame. Make sure you are on your first frame. And using the scroller wheel, if you click in the scroller wheel, you can move your your image around. And now what I like to do is I like to make sure these tracking points are in a good area where I know I'm going to get a good track. So a lot of like contrast between dark and light. So I'm going to drag these all over. And I'm just going to get a good tracking area. All right, once you have these all in a spot that you think you're going to get a good track, we want to come over here into our Inspector tab. If that isn't open, just make sure you hit Inspector in the top right. We want to put our Adaptive Mode to Best Match, bring down our Match Tolerance just a little bit, and we want to make sure we are on our first frame, and you want to come over here and track forward. While this is going on, we'll just watch the track, make sure it goes good. Make sure you guys are subscribing and liking uh, these videos it helps me out a ton and we are going to be releasing a bunch more videos coming up and you just don't want to miss out on it and also me and my wife and my dog we're getting into truck camping so you don't want to miss out on those videos either okay I stopped this track a little bit early because we don't need to track the whole entire thing as there would be a long clip and for the purpose of this tutorial we're just going to get with it alright so once you have your track done and the more points you have on your track obviously the longer that track is going to take However, the more, the better. I will tell you that right now. So what we want to do now is we want to take this tracker node and we want to drag it in to the output of the grid warp. Now that's going to create this merge. Let's clean this up a little bit. We want the grid on top. And we're going to come down. We're going to just clean this up. With that all cleaned up, we want to select this merge. Hit Control T or Command T. That's just going to switch our inputs. We want the grid warp on the foreground we want the tracker on the background our next 
objective here is we're going to go to our media pool. We're going to drag in our logo, which of course is my logo. And we're going to bring that up here. And we want to make sure we grab a background because we need this logo to be the same resolution as our video. So in order to do that, just for safety's sake, bring in your background, drag the media to output into the uh, background output here. That creates another merge. Same thing, control T, command T, transfer changes our inputs. And we are going to bring that merge to down into the grid warp. Now, as you can see, it makes everything black. We'll go on to your background node and drag that alpha all the way down. And there we go. It's there, but it's huge. So let's go back into our merge, bring down that size. And if the size isn't working, just play with the inputs here. Command T. Sometimes they go in the right way. Sometimes they don't. We want the media two on the foreground. So I had it right the first time. And I switched it, so we had to switch it back. But now we'll bring this size down. Let's zoom in on this. We can actually make this a single. And you can just use these um, arrows, or you can use the center um, in the inspector tab to adjust where you want this. But we want to put it on our guy. So let's make sure we're back on to there. And let's just keep sizing this down until we get where we want to go. And we're just about there. We'll make it a little bit bigger. And let's blend it just to make it look like it might be on there. Uh, and if we push play, let's go to the media. We'll click that. And I'm going to zoom, make sure we zoom in so we can see it. And if we just push play, as you can see, it moves with the creases in his shirt and it is tracked completely to his shirt. So that is the Mesh Tracker in DaVinci Resolve. It is a, an extremely powerful tool. You can put tattoos on people. You legitimately, I mean, there's you can put logos on shirts, on cars, you name it, you can do it. Just like I said, make sure you make every uh, one of those trackers on a solid tracking point or you're going to get some weird movement in your logo or whatever it is that you are adding into your scene. If you guys are liking these tutorials, make sure you smash that thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. If you like this format where I keep it um, a lot quicker and I don't do a whole lot of uh, ramble jamble, let me know. Um, but anything else you guys want to see, just let me know in the comments. I'm going to be releasing some LUTs very soon, actually probably this week. So make sure you guys are subscribing so you can hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on those LUTs because they are going to transform the way you do your color grading. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to catch you in the next one.